an interesting question for the field. So, so that model you know, is proven in, in yeast. Right? You can manipulate nicotinamide levels and, and control sirtuins and, and right. you get a problem where you can, if you give too much nicotinamide, it stops the sirtuins. And in human cells and culture, you can give huge amounts of nicotinamide and inhibit sirtuins for sure. In vivo, there's tons of speculation about whether this happens. There, there's not anything I'm aware of that proves definitively that you've managed to inhibit sirtuins at an in vivo, you know, achievable concentration of nicotinamide. Um, so I, I think that that's honestly an open question for the field. But what, what I will say is in our hands and in most people's hands, I think the level of nicotinamide that you get from administering nicotinamide is pretty comparable to the level you get from administering nicotinamide riboside. I think, you know, I think if it inhibits, it's going to be a problem for any supplementation strategy, not something that's unique to if you supplement with nicotinamide. And just to note, some people say that a drawback of nicotinamide is that high doses may inhibit the sirtuins, which are NAD dependent proteins that promote the cellular health and coordinate many of the beneficial effects of NAD. And this makes the use of nicotinamide seem counterintuitive. But the studies that are often quoted to support this theory have all been conducted in vitro, meaning they're done in cells in culture using exceptionally high concentrations of nicotinamide that would never be reached under normal physiological circumstances in the body. This is because in our bodies, the salvage pathway efficiently converts any leftover nicotinamide into fresh NAD, meaning that any nicotinamide is unlikely to hang around long enough inside healthy cells as it's rapidly converted to NAD to maintain tissue homeostasis. We use nicotinamide as the precursor to give your cells an adequate supply of the raw material that they need to make NAD. So the reason we use nicotinamide is because despite all of the hype surrounding NR and NMN, all scientific data shows that the majority of NAD in the body is made from recycled nicotinamide via the salvage pathway. The body likes to make NAD out of nicotinamide. And not to mention the fact that nicotinamide is actually the most bioavailable NAD precursor out of all of them. Now, supporters of NR and NMN tend to use the argument that you shouldn't take nicotinamide because it's a sirtuin inhibitor. But actually, if you look at all of the studies that they cite, all of these experiments were firstly done in vitro, meaning that they were done in isolated cells in Petri dishes using very high concentrations of nicotinamide that would never usually be reached in physiological conditions found in the body. Because remember, the body has homeostasis. It doesn't let things get too out of whack before it puts them right. And if you view the data even more closely, what you will find is that as long as the body actually has the capacity to convert nicotinamide to NAD via the salvage pathway, nicotinamide never actually gets a chance to hang around long enough in the cells to build up to such inhibitory levels because it's rapidly converted to NAD, which in turn actually activates the sirtuins. And you can see this by the data that I presented earlier, which basically shows that Nichido Time Plus despite containing nicotinamide, actually boost levels of SIR activity. In addition, nicotinamide's also got a lot of other benefits, um, even when inhibited at therapeutic high doses, for example, help with skin disorders, diabetes, neuronal damage, and also in various inflammatory diseases. 